2 Kings chapter 9. And Elijah the prophet called one of the children of the prophets. Now they're either called the sons of the prophets or the children of the prophets. And said unto him, so here's a particular charge. Gird up thy loins. Get ready to go. And take this box. This is the first time box shows up in the Bible. Of oil in thy hand. So the olive oil came in a box. And this is olive oil because it's going to anoint a, a man to be king. And it's amazing because I have never seen on the shelves a box of oil. I've seen bottles. In thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, not the king, the son of Nishai, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. So not in the presence of all the men, bring him inside more. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open up the door, flee, and tarry not. Now, this picture is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up, anointed. Christ means anointed. That's what Christ means. And if we go back to 1 Kings 19.15, we're going to be going back and forth here with this chapter. 1 Kings 19.15, we're going to see something that about this man Jehu, Elijah, and Elijah. And we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it a little bit more in depth. But Elijah has been threatened by Jezebel, and he takes off, and he goes off into the mountains, goes into a de de depressed state, and he gives Elijah a charge, like, "Come on, man, let's go. Let's get some work done here. Let's do something." And in verse fifteen in chapter nineteen, the Lord said unto him, Elijah, go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. He didn't do that. Now we just read Hazel is, is died. He was murdered. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, there's the man we're talking about right now, shalt thou, Elijah, anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, that's the first time Elisha shows up, the son of Sheba of Abramoth, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. There's only one thing if he did of that threefold commission. He established Elisha, but he didn't anoint Jehu. He did not anoint Hazel. And when we come back over here to 2 Kings chapter 9, Elisha can't do it because it was given to Elijah. So Elisha has one of his servants, and we're going to do something that God told Elijah to do. Now, Elijah's coming back in the tribulation period, we believe. Elijah was mentioned in Malachi, the closing chapters of Malachi. Elijah showed up with Jesus and Moses. And yet we have a thing here by Elijah that he rebelled against God. And God did not hold it from him and not ever use him again. This anointing of Jehu was supposed to be by Elijah, and he didn't do it. And there's a lot of things that God tells us to do. We don't do it. And that's not God putting us on, on the shelf. Now, if we repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly rebel against God and can repeatedly tell God no, then we end up on the shelf. But this was supposed to be back in 1 Kings 19, Elijah. Chapter 9, verse 4. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, so it says, one of the children of the prophets, it says the young man, even the young man, though it says child or son of the prophets, he, there's two prophets. Some of them are through prophets. He's just under somebody. He's under his father. Went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, having a little army meeting, sitting down in the meal. And he said, I have an errand. To thee, O king, O captain, excuse me. So Jehu is a military captain. He's not a king yet. 
He's in the authority of troops and soldiers. This is the man God is called to be next. And Jehu said unto which of us, which of all us? Sometimes you really got to read it slow. And he said to thee, O captain, look at the respect. Look at the respect. And he arose and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head. And said unto him, now this is where Elijah told him, said, go in there, pour the oil on him, say, listen, you're annoyed the king of Israel, open the door and get out. This man is going to tarry a little bit. I don't know if Elijah didn't know something and God had it. Remember, Elijah, that, that, that great woman, Shanum, comes up. And Elijah goes, hey, go greet you. Say, hi, how you doing? And God had not told him that her son had died. And when you look at the, the ministry of Elijah, sometimes God withholds from him information. Now, Elijah told this man, all right, annoy him. Open the door, get out. Okay, let's see what the man does. He arose, went into the house, and poured the oil on his head. Yep. And said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of, of the Lord, over Israel. So there's still God's people, even though there's a north and a south. That's what Elijah told him. At that moment, he should open the door and left. But the prophet still speaks. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master. He's already dead. But the legacy of Ahab is still going. That I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So let's go back to 1 Kings 19.1. Let's see something here. Let's see that there was a reason. I don't know how you end up in 2 Kings 19, but 1 Kings 19, 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he slain all the prophets with the sword, her prophets. Then Jezebel sent a messenger on Elijah to say, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. And then, like I said, he takes off. He's in fear. Why? Well, we have to read in 2 Kings chapter 9 that she's already killed the prophets of the Lord. And remember, we read about Obadiah. He hid 50 of them by tens, I think it was. He's protecting prophets of the Lord from Je Jezebel has been actively killing prophets. That's what scared Elijah. Now, would that not get you scared? Here you are, a prophet of the Lord. You just wiped out Baal's prophets. You just proved God is the Lord. God is the Lord. Remember on Mount Carmel. You got this wicked woman upset. I would not show up at her banquet party. So there, is, there was a reason why Elijah took off. This woman is accredible to her words. Listen, if you don't die, the gods do so more than me, and she's been killing prophets. That's why. Look at that. Look how many chapters we got to go away from that to get the truth. Elijah was not a coward. This woman held to her words. I'm going to kill you. You're dead. Ask Naboth. This is how wicked this woman is. Verse 8. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, that's males, and him that shut up and left in Israel. We've, we've heard that before. We've heard it with Ahab. We've heard it with Basha. And shut up means that they're confined. They're, they're stricken. They can't get out. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam dead, the son of Nebat like the house of Basha dead, and the son of Ahijah. That has not stopped the reign of the golden calves and the reign of Baal. And it's not going to stop with Jehu either, if I can give you advance what we're going to do. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel, 
in the portion of Jezreel, that's kind of like a hospital area they go to. We've seen it before. And there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. And what we're going to find out is when Jezebel dies, she's eaten by the dogs, and there's nothing left to bury her. We'll get to that soon. Not tonight. She becomes dog food. And as a result, what happens when a dog eats the food? She becomes dog poop. And I got a message. Be careful not to step in Jezebel. And remember, dogs are unclean. They're scavengers. You would think, oh, how cute that little puppy ate. No. How unclean is that animal that ate this unclean woman? And Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord. So he steps out of that. He comes back outside where they've been eating at the table. And one said unto him, is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? Now that's an interesting word that we're going to look up. John 10, 20. We'll look up three verses here. John 10, 30. Mad. And it doesn't mean angry. And this seems to be the, the common thinking of prophets in the Bible. There are people that think I'm mad. As far as the public ministry. So chapter 10, verse 20 of John. And many of them said, he, Jesus, has a devil and is mad. Jesus is preaching. He's just teaching. He just got done saying, listen, I am the good shepherd. I give my, my life for the sheep. There are other sheep I know not. And the porter, he lets them in. There's nothing wrong with, it, with what he says in chapter 10. Not as bad as chapter 6. And the first response for them is, you're mad. You're crazy. Acts 26, 24. And there are plenty of people, if you are in a public ministry, I know for sure, that will think you to be mad. You're crazy. And guess what? If somebody comes up to you, you are involved in any public ministry, and they come up to you and say, you're crazy, you can say, I got biblical proof on that. Thank you very much. Acts 26, 24. Now, Paul, what's Paul doing? He's before the, 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 the Senate, the, the people of, of authority. And all he's done is given his testimony. And at verse 24. And as he thus spanked for himself, Paul, Festus said with a loud voice. Ooh, Festus, keep it down. Too loud. Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning does make thee mad. All he did was give his testimony. All he's given is about Jesus Christ and the gospel and salvation. And it's found that throughout the gospel, found throughout the ministry of the, of the saints. You're mad. And he, Paul goes so far as to say to the book of the Corinthians, it's foolish. Not the message, but the idea of screaming at people is foolish. Now, it's not as far as the ministry, but what is the aspect of thinking about, Paul, you're mad. Jesus, you're mad. This prophet that came in annoyed, he's mad. What is the relationship to that? Thinking, 1 Samuel 21.12. 1 Samuel 21.12. It's not that I'm angry. And some people will say, you know, you're angry. No, I'm not. Let's, let's look at what they, and if they could get away with, what would they do upon our quote unquote madness? 1 Samuel 21, 12. What do they think? The Bible gives us the great of scripture with scripture. Don't tamper with the Bible. I guarantee this is probably lost. In modern Bibles, 21.12, And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achis, the king of Gash. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned, pretend himself mad 
in their hands and scrabbled on the door of the gate like a wolf man, like a monster, and let his spittle, his spit, fall down on his, upon his beard. But the, and you may laugh at that, but that's what people think we're doing when we are part of the ministry of God in the Bible. That's what they mean by mad. But what's the Bible say? The Bible says, God says, I love the feet of them that carry the gospel of good tidings. To the world who do not know God, believe they know God, but don't know God, you're foolish, you're crazy, you're stupid. So don't be amazed in how they treat you because this is how they think of you. And the fact is, if they were to come up, and I, I think we've had some people call me mad or crazy, and those kind of ones. That's biblical. Thank you. It shows to me that your father, Satan, knows the Bible. And they called Jesus. I mean, of all people all the world, what, who would be the last person you would ever think they would call mad and crazy? I would, the last person I would ever think would be Jesus Christ. Have you ever read and studied John chapter 10? What is wrong with that chapter? You're mad, you got the devil. Wow. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou, be, thou shalt be saved. Shut up, you're too loud, you're crazy. Preach love. What did I upset you with? So Matt, that's an interesting little story of Matt. Came this mad fellow to thee. He's the sons of the prophet. They know who he is. So it shows you their activity and their conduct to these to God up north. In Israel, any man that's a that's a that's a child of God, a prophet of God, he's foolish, he's crazy. I'm in a good group of people, and he said unto them, "Ye know the man and his communication. You know who that guy is." And they said, "It is false. Tell us now." And he said, "Thus and thus spank he to me." It doesn't tell us what if he half gave the message or quarter gave the message. Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. And at that moment, then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew the trumpet. Oh, trumpets, not the trump of God. Trumpets. Here comes the Lord Jesus and revengeful. Taking revenge on those who have killed people innocently, killed people of the word of God. Isn't that one part where I've seen the souls of these people beheaded for the word of God? Say, Lord, what are you going to avenge us? Just hold on. Wait a little longer. Saying, Jehu is king. Now, Jehu, he's going to do wrong. But you can't press a type 100%. So, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshad, Okay, you got to get that. You got to make sure you, you know it's not the Jehoshaphat, the king. Conspired against Joram. Now, Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel, because of Hazel, Hazel the king of Syria. A little side note in there, parenthesis Mark. But King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of his wounds, which the Syrians had given him. When he had fought with Hazel, the king of Syria, and we just finished that in chapter 8, verse 29. That's what we that's what we finished last night. So Jehoram has been injured by a military attack. He goes back to this city where they have rest and all that, and he's resting there. He's injured. And Jehu said, If it be your mind, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go to tell it to Jezreel. We're going to attack and you better not let anybody escape out of that city. No one's going to run off and say, Jehiel is attacked. Prepare yourselves. And Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel. For Joram lay there. And Azahiah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram, that's exactly what we just finished in 824. King Joram is down, Azahiah is in Judah, 
Joram is in Israel. They made this alliance together. They got this great big family together. Judah has married into the family of Ahab and Jezebel. Wickedness. And there stood a watchman on the tower of Jezreel. And he spied a company of Jehu as he came. So he sees them off in the far distance. And said, I see a company. Here comes some people. And Joram said, take a horseman. It's the first time that word shows up. And send to meet them and let him say, is it Pete? All right, send a guy out there. Have him meet him. Are you guys coming in peace or are you coming to war? So they went out. So they went one on horseback. That's the first horseback in the Bible. First horseman, first horseback. To meet him. And said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Your country, your area, what have you done? You're killing prophets, you're killing people. You just came back from a war with Syria. What well, are you talking about peace? Get behind me. What have I to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. You know it's funny? When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, turn thee behind me. Do you know who's behind Jesus at that point? Us, the church. And the watchman told, saying, the messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. He met with them, but he's not coming back. Then he sent out the second on horseback, which came to them and said, thus saith the king, is it peace? And Jehu answered, what, what has thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. You ain't going back and tell them nothing. Get out of my way. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu. This is how Jehu drives. The son of Nimshai. For he driveth, that's the first time that word shows up, furiously. That's the first time that word shows up. And that means violently. Hey, he's just a bad driver. Violent. That's what spiritually means. Maybe knocking people off the road or something. I don't know. It's not just fast. It's just not speeding. But the recklessness of his driving. And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Joram, king of Israel, and as the high, the king of Judah went out. Now look at these two together. Remember, as the high is married the sister, uh, the, yeah, the daughter of, of Jezebel and Ahab. I mean, they're one big family, so they're going out together. They don't need to be together. Each in his chariot. And they went out against Jehu to meet him in the portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Oh, oh, you know what happened in, in, in the portion of Naboth? That's where Jezebel had Naboth killed for the plot of herbs that Ahab wanted. Look how we came right back to where we are again. That's where blood was shamed innocently of Naboth. And it came to pass when Jerem saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother, ooh, meaning, the whoredoms of thy mother and her witchcrafts. That's the first time that word shows up. Plural. Are so many. Your mother is a wicked woman. Is what he just said. There's no peace with your mother. Being where she is. And what she's doing. And Joram turned his hands. And fled. Oh, I'm out of here. And said to Azahiah. There is, there is treachery O Azahiah. Come on let's get out of here. We're afraid. Gonna... And Jehu drew a bow. With his Full strength. He got that bull. He's pulling that bull as far as he can. And smote Jehoram between his arms. And the arrow went out of his heart. Ouch. Shall we call Jehu Cupid? Shooting the arrow through the heart? That doesn't mean love. That means he sunk down in his chariot. He's dead. When do you shoot someone in the heart and he, oh, love, I love you to death. Then said Jehu to Bitkar, his captain, take up and cast him in a portion of the field of Naboth, the Jezreel, where Naboth was killed. For remember how that when I 
and thou rode together after Ahab, his father. Oh, they were they were in the army of Ahab. The Lord laid this burden upon him. Here's the burden. It's a Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth. That's the Lord speaking. And the blood of his sons. Ooh, that's interesting. Saith the Lord, I will requite. I'll pay back. Thee in the plat, that plat and the next plat coming up, that's the only two places where those words are there. And if you look it up in the dictionary, it talks about, it brings you the definition platted, how they made the thorns for the crown of Jesus' head. I don't know. I don't know what each has to do with the other. I would assume plat is land, but if you were to plat it, you sew the thorns together and they put them on Jesus' head. I don't know what that is. Just telling you what I what I found out. Maybe it's a place where thorns are. Did not God tell? And this is just coming to my heart right now. I did not look at this. Did not God tell uh, Cain, when the blood of your brother, thorns and thistles are going to come up, you can't grow crops anymore? Maybe that wonderful land that he wanted, Ahab wanted for herbs. Thinking about now with, with the definition for Jesus, maybe that whole land became thorns because of the blood. I, I, the, just laid that on my heart right now. I, don't, I haven't looked at it much. but. Ahab couldn't continue that land as Cain could not continue in his land because of the blood. Both brethren, though brother and brother, Ahab and Naboth were brothers by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's kind of interesting what the Lord just laid in my heart right there. It looks like that wonderful land that was once a vineyard now wants it to be a herd. It looks like it may be a land of thorns. I guess America's going to have a lot of thorns coming up for all the blood that's on her land. Because you keep them in jail. And I will quite thee in this plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground. And it says plat of ground. So I don't understand. It's a land measure, maybe, according to the word of the Lord. And we're going to stop right there. Jehu has gotten rid of the king of Israel for him to be king. And he's not going to be good. But as is next, and then we get Jezebel next. I did not want to go quick on Jezebel. We give her her own little night. We'll give her one more night to live. 